The stand of direct seeded lettuce looks awesome. It's definitely recovering from the cold damage. And there's actually quite a bit that I could start harvesting now. So that was seeded all the way across this border with garlic along the edge. Remember, garlic is for deterring animals both in ground and above ground. And then in here, the sort of front third is all mostly um, larkspur. You can see there, a big stand there. And behind that are primarily the bread seed poppies. So that is the kind of, you know, pale green scalloped edge. And there's really good density of the poppies here. I do not thin them. I let the plants fight it out for themselves. Sometimes that's not the best thing, but it's my approach. And another plant of interest that's in here is cilantro. And I grow cilantro not only to be able to harvest the delicious foliage, I do like eating cilantro, you know, in, in like salsas and stuff, but it has a wonderful small white flower that provides important nectar for pollinators and it looks really pretty mixed in with all of the poppies. Now a problem plant that I have a lot of in this bed is this Veronica. And this is a little ground cover and it is native and it has a tiny little blue flower. And you know, if it, if it didn't seed absolutely everywhere, I would think it was charming. But its behavior definitely, for me, makes it fall into the weed category. So remember, the term weed is kind of objective and everybody has a different stance, but I'm showing you what I consider to be problems in my garden. And I've learned this over more than a decade of managing this property and recognizing what the troublemakers are. And this Veronica falls into the troublemaker category. Up here in the side property border, I really only have one thing uh, that is well established and this is self-sewing nigella, also known as love in the mist. The way you can distinguish nigella from larkspur is the fact that it has these kind of longer leaf panicles. So you see how the leaf kind of is more horizontal and elongated. That is the thing that distinguishes nigella from larkspur. I'll show you a side to side comparison. Okay, so here for a side to side comparison. Over here, kind of longer, flatter, more of a rosette. That is nigella. Here is larkspur. You see, the leaves are very similar, but the larkspur basically only have two segments. And the nigella has what? One, two, three, four, five, six segments. So that's how I distinguish them. Otherwise, the cut ferny foliage looks very much the same. Now the other plant that's robustly self-sewing in here is Lunaria. That is also known as the money plant. I did not intend for this much Lunaria to self-sew, but this has been a particularly difficult area because it's like, I mounted it a little too high, it drains really fast and it stays super dry. So if Lunaria is the plant that likes this environment, I think I should probably just ease into that because I've had a, a huge struggle trying to keep perennials and stuff going here because it just dries out so much in the summer. Now, Lunaria is a biennial, so I don't think that any of this is actually gonna flower this year because I think this was all self-sown from last year's blooms. But I might be wrong, so we'll have to, you know, keep doing updates so that we see how this money plant behaves this spring. And look what I've spotted in bloom, a little dandelion. I am not offended by dandelion. I'm not gonna let there be thousands, but I'm certainly not gonna pull that one 
Um, I think there are worse weeds to worry about. Like that. Just kind of sporadically everywhere and I never get all of it and I never will. And it's just kind of the weed on this property that will forever be with me. Now here on the south facing section of the fence, I'm pretty discouraged and then I don't see anything good germinating. All of that that is green are weeds. <laughs> and really probably the worst weed ever, worse than vetch, is this guy, this Velcro weed. And it's really important that I go ahead and get this removed because it sticks to everything, particularly my cat's fur, and they spread it all over. So if I get rid of any that could go to seed, I can help like stop a generation. This is another bed that I did, I think like right after New Year's. Oh, look at, oh, you guys, this is awesome. There are seedlings germinating. Oh, that's a good sign. Hot dog. Those are all poppies. I'm pretty sure that's what I primarily sowed in here. You really have to be down up on them, but there they are. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So obviously this bed was top dressed with soil cube. And I'm positive that that's gonna lead to a successful experience. I am seeing a whole bunch of seedlings. This is so, oh, this just like turned my day around. Holy smokes. Look at all those. This is gonna be so pretty in the spring. All different color poppies. You guys, I'm just so excited about seeing these poppies germinate. Wow. I was really starting to feel bad about myself <laughs> with that sunny area along the fence. This really just changed my mood. This bed, it's kind of like the big side property border in the backyard, is probably the most successful. This was all self-sown. So there's something to the power of <laughs> seed distributing itself and I didn't disturb the soil at all I just let everything kind of happen so this is primarily larkspur but there's also nigella mixed in and some bachelor button and some poppies and there's some weeds in here I'm gonna again spend some quality time cleaning up these beds to make it so that it will be more manageable in years to come. So I showed you freshly germinated carrots, but here is a carrot that is going to flower this year. So this is not being grown for harvesting the root. It's to allow the floral display. And in this bed, carrots have been kind of self-sowing for you know probably five years and you can see this is the foliage and they just end up having like a pretty big basil rosette and they're just sort of congregated right in here they're not everywhere but they really are a wonderful addition just to let some of your carrots stay in the ground an extra season and then they will flower here is the bed where the escholtia the california poppy these were actually left over from last year. You can see the cold has definitely caused some damage and even some rot, but I'm pleased to see that this has, you know, good, nice new growth, good green. And there's more planted here. There's also nigella, more of that red Russian kale. Not many, but a few poppies, some larkspur. So overall, I'd say this bed is going to look very pretty, but yet again, look at where some of the very best plants are outside of the bed. You know, here we have a nice established bachelor button and a big poppy and well-established larkspur. 
So this is how my beds get bigger every year. <laughs> you can really see things like to self sew right along the bottle edges. And that's because of the microclimate that it creates and also the fact that the soil doesn't get disturbed there. So that's why you see so many poppies bottle adjacent. And really my best advice for seed if you're having some trouble getting things to grow, um, throw them in your walkway. <laughs> right along the edges of your walkway. You can see all of these are self-sown. That's larkspur, poppies, you know, really healthy poppies right here along these concrete blocks. So if you're not having success actually in your ground, maybe put down some gravel and give it a try. Now the final bed as we make our way around my garden is this arugula border that has a lot of arugula in it, but it's also showing a lot of not so desirable plants. So here we have that uh, weedy geranium, a lot of it, a whole lot of it. Look at all of that. Mm. And of course, more vetch right here. And a whole mix of things. You've got some chickweed, we have some lamium, but in and amongst all of that, we do have poppy seeds. So when you're weeding, you do have to be really careful. And you know, uh, when you know what you're looking for, weeding can be really kind of fun and relaxing, but it's definitely not a brainless activity. Um, not when you have this kind of diversity that you're planting with. So just be cautious. Well, I hope today's video will be helpful to you in some context. And, um, you know, I can only show what I have. And so if you have other plants that I didn't cover, um, often your state extension will have really good resources for identifying, you know, regional weeds with, you know, images and videos. Uh, but you can also hit me up. You can always send me, you know, a picture to Brie at BrieGrows.com and I'll try to help you identify what you have growing if it's something that I'm familiar with. Well, um, please give me a like and share with your friends and be sure to subscribe to the Brie the Plant Lady YouTube channel for more practical gardening advice. Thanks so much for watching everybody.